Ladies and gentlemen, we now have the Africa Club of the Springdale's School of Sarodio. I had hoped that uh, I would remain here for the duration of the meeting. But unfortunately, because of pressing duties also in this country. I have to leave immediately after I have made my remarks. This meeting was not part of the official schedule. But when we were informed uh, shortly before we left South Africa that there was a possibility of us sharing this moment with you, we were all elated. Our struggle is very unique because it has received wide support not only in our country, in our region, in Africa, but throughout the world, in Europe, in both North and South America, in the Middle East, in Asia, and more particularly in this country. There are many reasons for the uniqueness of our struggle. If I tried to, to identify all of them, I would be here for the greater part of this meeting. But I just want to mention too, is the role of the anti-apartheid movement. The anti-apartheid movement, just as the attack which was made by Judge Chandra at the United Nations has done a great deal to popularize our struggle. Why we formed our liberation movements, the aims of these movements, the type of oppression under which we live. The anti-apartheid movement has brought to the attention of the entire world the situation in South Africa. So much so that today our struggle is supported by practically every country in the world irrespective of the type of government that is in power in that country. That is unique. I do not think that uh, there is any other liberation movement that has received the attention of the world as ours. Today, we have many friends some of them very powerful. And there is a strong temptation that is one of the weaknesses of human nature. There is a strong temptation 
to forget those friends who were with us when we were all alone and weak. And when many countries in the world thought it was midsummer madness ever to think that blacks in our country would ever take power. And therefore they supported the apartheid regime. All those countries now want us to give them precedence in treating, in, their, in treating them much more than those who were with us when we were all alone. And there is a temptation that we might forget our own friends. And I readily agreed, and this was supported by my delegation, to delay my departure from here so that I can be able to express our appreciation directly to those who are pioneers in supporting the people of South Africa in their country. Because we are now in power. In my view, this is a matter which should be discussed by the anti apartheid organizations themselves. But I think that uh, it would be a tragic mistake if the anti apartheid movement dissolved. Because we have won the election. We are in office. We do not yet wield power in our own country. That was built in order to serve a party, in order to serve a white minority which constitutes 40% of the population. Re educated in order to serve the democratic government. And that is going to be a long process. And if we are not vigilant, vigilant inside and outside South Africa, to ensure that apartheid in all its ramifications is dismantled, um, if we are able to get all the influential sections in our society on the side of democracy. That moment is still yet to be. And in expressing our appreciation to the anti-apartheid movement, there are two personalities here I would like to just to mention in person. The first is the one we honored today, Father Trevor Hollis. He is one of those people whose name will remain immortal for many centuries to come because of the work that he has done. Very few, it is given to very few uh, people in the world that at the age of 82, he should still remain in his post, fighting as hard as young people, some of whom do not even think of committing themselves to fighting for the liberation of their country. He he is the embodiment of the anti-apartheid movement, not only in Britain and South Africa, but throughout the world. It was a tribute to him that uh, in July 1991, the first conference of the African National Congress, after it had been banned for 30 years, of South Africa paid to this veteran of the liberation movement. 
and we are very grateful to him. And it's a great honor for me to be present when uh, he was honored with such a significant award as the Indira Gandhi Prize. A brother-in-law said uh, she lost a mother-in-law in Dira. And uh, to complete the tragedy, she lost her beloved husband. A single tragedy could have broken many a person many a woman. But she is an example of those who can turn disaster into victory. <laughs> and she created, she has created an image which inspired even ourselves behind bars. when her mother-in-law and her brother-in-law passed away, who were already back from exile and out of prison when her beloved husband was assassinated. But she has turned that tragedy into fiction. She has established the Rajiv Gandhi Foundation, which is doing monumental work for justice, for equality, for human di dignity, we go on. And notwithstanding the aura around him, because of her demeanor, she remains remarkable, humble. And in almost everything, you have to pull her in order for her to shake hands with you. I know of, of hardly of a few cases of people in that position, but who are so humble, so respectful, so modern. <laughs> Luminaries like Father Hartleston and Sonia Gandhi. In this meeting, and as I have said elsewhere, I will go with my delegation and I to our country, feeling strong and refreshed because of the warmth with which we have received here and the fact that we share this moment with such great. I want to express my sincere appreciation uh, to the Spring Day Choir for to this occasion with fond memories. Thank you. Thank you.